Mark Brimley, the president of Ignatius Press, and we're here in San Francisco in the Sunset District at the offices of Ignatius Press. We're surrounded by books and a beautiful old firehouse. How did that the happen? global headquarters. <laughs> the global headquarters, yes. That's right. There's no printing press here. No <laughs> printing press, that's right. Yeah. But it's, a, it's an old firehouse. Right? Old firehouse, historic landmark mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and we moved in here now, I guess it's 11, 12 years ago, Whoa. and uh, it was a school at that time. It had originally been a firehouse, and it had become a school, then we purchased it, and we made it our editorial offices. Uh, obviously, we are, we're not warehousing all of our books and everything here, but we made it our editorial offices, and we sort of uh, re tried to restore somewhat uh, the firehouse motif. So as you, as you noticed when you came in, there was a fire pole, right, you know, and right. we kept that. So right. in the front of the building, again, it looks like a, an old firehouse, which is what it was. Now give us something of a thumbnail of the history of Ignatius Press. Well, fa Father Fessio founded Ignatius Press now, what, 40, 44 years ago. And, uh, you know, he, young Jesuit, came back from his theological formation in Europe uh, under uh, uh, some of the theological giants, you know, uh, Henri de Lubac, Cardinal de Lubac, and uh, of course he studied, and he did his dissertation on Hansers von Balthasar, and of course knew Balthasar, but of course he did this doctoral work under Joseph Ratzinger, mm -hmm. who became Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Came back to the United States um, through uh, some friends who were interested in uh, learning more about some of the, the the folks that Father had studied over through a reading group. Uh, the idea emerged of translating these works into English, and, and there's a long story to it, but uh, basically that inspiration of bringing these great European uh, theologians and spiritual writers to the American reading public that, start, that was the motivation behind Father starting Ignatius Press. Having never drunk beer or wine here, mm -hmm. but having learned to drink wine in France and beer in Germany, uh, I had my first American beer, which I spat out, and I said, if this is beer, I need another name for what I had in Bavaria. You know? <laughs> and that was my experience with theology here. Right. You know, the theology was all right, but it didn't compare with Ratzinger, Boyer, de Lubac, Juan Balthasar, Congar, that whole group. And so we decided we would start uh, a publishing company in order to make those works available in English. And I love it, it's like in the heart of the 70s. Yes. <laughs> we're abandoning catechetics and Father's gonna start a publishing house to bring back these books and people read them though. Right, right? well and, and you know these were um, uh, sort of, they were the, the spiritual and theological writers that are now kind of ident identified with the communio group of theologians and spiritual writers and that vision of uh, going back to the sources of faith that was emerging in the 40s and 50s and then really shaped the Second Vatican Council and, and those uh, theologians and writers, spiritual writers, who uh, experienced the period immediately after the council and they were saying, wait a minute, this is not really what the council is all, all about. So in a certain sense, I mean, it, it, it's providential that Father founded Ignatius Press to kind of keep that spiritual and theological balance uh, that we're seeing now, you know, 50 years later, there's a lot of struggles around that. And you were part of the English translation of the Catechism, right? Ah, yes, I was. Tell that us was a little a, about that. Another long story. <laughs> Father Mark, this is a... Uh, do a limited, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there was a translation that was done by Cardinal Law's uh, uh, team under this Monsignor Moran, which basically was not just inclusive language, inclusive language, but it was uh, uh, it was just a total mistranslation. For example, I mean, I never forget this one. <clears throat> the original was in French, okay, uh, and there was a, pa a chapter which began or a paragraph which began. Uh, Notre Sainte Mère l'Église a toujours enseigné. Our Holy Mother Church has always taught. Translation, it is common opinion. Oh, you know, that. I mean, ridiculous, you know. Right. <laughs> and so, no, we, we stopped that. In fact, as a matter of fact, here's, here's Mother's Elka story. It was during that retranslation of the Catechism, which we did at Ignatius Press in our basement in nine weeks because Ratzinger asked us to do it. 
we discovered that all three translations of the Bible had been inclusivized. The New American Bible, the Jerusalem Bible, and the RSV, the NRSV. So we decided, I guess, we're, we're going to come back and reprint one of the standard English translations. Talked to Scott Hahn. He said RSV is the best. And so at that time, we were kind of struggling. So I called up Mother Angelica. I said, Mother Angelica, here's what's happening. We need to, uh, we need to republish the RSV, but we don't have the money. What's it going to cost? About $100,000. Checks in the mail. Mm. You know? Now, we paid her back. But, I mean, that was, I'm telling you, that didn't take more than 12 seconds on that phone call. Mm. God bless Mother, St. Mother Angelica. <laughs> now, what's a typical book like you're looking for? What catches your eyes that you're going to publish? It's hard to say what's <laughs> typical, uh, but at least this much. We have to believe that it will help the spiritual life of uh, the person who reads the book and will serve the mission of the church. So that's foundational. It doesn't matter whether we're publishing a coloring book and we publish coloring books or children's books or a lot of popular fiction or popular spirituality or high-end theology and philosophy. Mm -hmm. We have to be convinced that it's going to serve the mission of the church and be faithful to the church's uh, teaching, mission, and tradition. So. This is a friend of mine, Eva Montaigne, and her We go way <laughs> back. <laughs> and what is, uh, what's your job here at the press? I do, I am in marketing. I've been here for 30, 30 some years. Wow. I know, I've been here a long time. And I do, I used to do the catalogs, but now I do all the website work and then ordering and, uh -huh. and customer service and working with right. the warehouse. And you're the main organizer of the walk? That's yeah. right, right here. Everything that, everything that happens at the Walk for Life happens from this desk. Yeah. <laughs> I take, yeah, everything happens from right here. <laughs> Let's talk about this. this well, this uh, is Mia. Mia okay. is the Ignatius Press Walk for Life and Star of the Sea Parish mascot. I had this idea many, many years ago, because I go to so many conferences for Ignatius Press, and everybody who sees a famous person or something, they always say, can I get my picture with you? Well, I decided I did not want my picture with people, but I asked, started asking people if they would hold Mia and let me take their picture. And that started this whole, for years I've been doing this. You, you're here from many, many years ago. Sure I mean, this is when Mia didn't even have any gray on her face. <laughs> so that's how many years yeah. ago that is. What would you give advice to? like the next generation of Catholics and whatever struggles they're going to have, what would you tell them? Well, I, I actually think the church in the United States is quite healthy now. Mm -hmm. when, when I got ex interested in Catholic radio and went to do go for profit and mothers said, don't do that, it's ridiculous. So that was 1997. There are only two radio stations in the U.S. owned by Catholics that were run with Catholic material. But since that time, there are now 600 Catholic radio stations in this country, and I don't know a single one that's liberal. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all solidly Catholic. Mm -hmm. So we've got that. We've got new pub, new, not just Ignatius Press. Now. I'm not going to mention names, but there's a lot of good Catholic mm -hmm. publishers out there as well. Blogs, young Catholic priests, more seminarians. So I think we're basically healthy. A lot of good bishops, a lot of good young priests. We just have to keep the faith. And I think we're facing a declining culture, but with all the Catholic lay people, especially the apologetic groups uh, and publishers and magazines and blogs and writers and radio stations, I think we're in pretty good shape. I mean, the key thing is having children, right? And bringing up in the faith. My advice is to keep doing what you're doing and watch it begin, read Ignatius Press books and follow the good Catholic bloggers. Well, we're leaving Ignatius Press and I, I've got my two free books. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe these videos. And I will give you a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine His face upon you. May He give you His peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.